All right, uh, ready for a first just quick test of my setup. Uh, go over what I have here. Uh, this is the front facing side of the electronics board. Obviously it'll be in R2 in this orientation, this being the bottom, that being the top. Um, things you can see are numerous holes where connectors will go for feet, speakers, dome power, uh, dome rotation motor, obviously battery in, and then I've got three different hookups down at the bottom. One will be to control a switch that uh, handles the relay to disconnect and connect the foot motors. Uh, the other one will pass 5 volts to the body to power things in the body and then another one will be an extra, this one here that I've got screwed in that currently has no wires going to it because I don't know what I'll hook up to it yet but I wanted to make another slot on the board for another plug. And then we've got two voltmeters, uh, 24 volt on the bottom, 5 volt on the top. And how we've got the top half set up here, we have an XT90 connector, we have 10 gauge wire, we have the black ground wire going directly into this battery. Then this battery's positive goes into this battery's negative, meaning you're running them in series, so it's not two 12 volt batteries, it's one 24 volt system. Then the positive lug from this side goes down to a 40 amp breaker switch. Through the breaker switch, the positive power comes back out and goes into the board. So right now, again, I'm printing. Sorry about the printer noise. So this test right here is just a real quick test. I'm going to power the system on and hopefully we will see voltage readings on the meters. There we go. Awesome. We've got 5.04. I like that for a 5 volt reading. And then the 24 volt system is at 26.6 because these batteries have only been used for a few seconds to test things. So that shows right there that we've got our 5 volts correct, we've got our 26 volts coming from the batteries, the breaker switch works, this will be mounted in the skirt, so this is just a temporary right now, these wires will be cut to fit, this will be mounted on the skirt, which means I get to take R2 apart. And that's our board, so I will pause this I will um, unplug it and flip it over and show what's going on on the back. This is the back as of right now, just the very basic setup for the voltages and the meters. So here again is the bottom of the board. This will be facing down in R2. Here is where our 10 gauge wires come in from the battery positive from the 24 volts goes to this bus bar, so this bus bar is 24 volts unfused. Ground goes into this bus bar. Then we have another 10 gauge lead that goes up to this, which is the fused 24 fuse block. So there, as you can see, one fuse in there. I put this cover because I'm testing it and I didn't want anything to touch anything and possibly short something out. So I've got the plastic covers on all of these. So each of these slots here, which there are four of, can take a fuse and provide a fused connection for 24 volts, which will be in use uh, for the amplifier and also the 24 volts that'll go up to the dome where it will be converted into 5 volts to power the servos and electronics in the dome will come off of this line and one of these plugs, this plug here, this one is for the foot. Okay, go back down here. 
So this side we have a positive wire from this voltage converter that takes 12 or 24 volts and converts it to 5 volts. So it has its red wire with 24 volts in, black wire with ground. You can see where I wrote red equals 24 volts because that's what I hooked up wrong last time and fried my electronics so I made a note. So that means that this yellow wire is 5 volts out to here. So this is again 4 position fused block. So anything connected to here will use 5 volts protected by a fuse. And then the ground from this goes up to this ground bus bar. So, uh, talking, chatting on uh, YouTube, uh, messages back and forth, uh, somebody was asking about, is this voltage regulator, does this black wire that goes to the ground and then in, and then a, the other black one goes out to here, are those wires internally connected in this voltage regulator? And they are. As you can see from this setup right now, the only ground, this comes in from the battery, the well, ground negative side of the battery comes into here, goes into this, and then out of this up to here. So I, what I'm thinking of doing, that's probably fine, but what I had mentioned before, um, working on pinball machines, they have a lot of small light bulbs. And one way that they power them, I should have brought one out, but they use a connector that will have multiple wires that go into the pinball machine and then hook up to multiple different incandescent bulbs. And so you might have five or six wires that go out to a dozen or more bulbs. And then you have one ground line that goes through all of those bulbs and connects back to the pinball machine. So multiple power going out and one ground return line coming back in. And a lot of the uh, pinball machines that you look at, especially the older you get, that ground line, the plastic connector will be melted, it'll be burnt brownish, because there's the return line for the circuit of the power is small enough compared with the amount of power that's going out to all the incandescent bulbs that over time it's just a spring you know spring tension connector that touches a metal pin on the circuit board in the pinball machine and it creates resistance as it gets older and tarnished and the connections not making good contact and that just gets worse and worse as time goes by more resistance makes more heat, makes more resistance and corrosion and bad contact until eventually the connector can burn. So I am a little nervous that everything that gets powered on this system just has this ground wire, this one thin ground wire. I don't know what gauge that is. I think it might be 8. It does say on it, but I can't remember. I think it might be 18 gauge. Um, I'm thinking of running another ground wire from down here all the way up to this bus bar just to have another ground. So there's a, just a little bit more path for the electricity to complete all the circuits instead of just this going through this one wire into this bus bar here from this bus bar so if I route a wire directly between these two that'll just kind of add more capacity and again I am no electronics expert but just going by um, the stuff I've done over the years again makes me worried that maybe that's not the optimum setup to have just that one wire to handle the ground um, electricity return path so it's very easy to just add another ground line and it doesn't hurt anything so I think I think I'll probably end up doing that um, not sure what else to talk about um, this is battery in 
this here, I'm trying to remember what all I've decided on. I think I was going to do this 5 volts that goes to the body electronics. This I just put in today. Um, it will be left alone until I can think of a use if I want to run 5 volts to it or probably 24 volts to it. And then from there, maybe to the body, to a voltage regulator for 5 volts instead of using this. I'm not sure. So, like, future expansion. Um, I've got foot, foot, dome motor, um, power that goes up to the dome to power the electronics in the dome. Speaker connection, which really an XT60 for a speaker connection is way, way overkill, but it's what I have, so I'm putting one there. And then now I honestly can't remember what I was going to put here. <laughs> but I wanted to make sure I had enough holes, so I made this one today. So I had had all of this wiring pretty much done until today, where I put this extra uh, for future expansion um, plug in. Uh, the other thing I'll go over just quickly, this is the back of those two voltage meters. And I, they have these really thin wires um, that are soldered to the boards that you attach to whatever you want to measure the voltage from. And I didn't want to wrap those around these posts. That's not, that's not a really good way... to do things and yes my battery is unplugged so there's no power going through this so rather than take the positive wire for this meter the lower one that's measuring the 24 volts by measuring off here rather than just like wrapping the bare wire around one of these terminals or squishing it underneath the washer because each of these has either a bolt or a screw and then there's washer underneath um, I crimped a ring terminal onto a piece of wire and then I crimped a DuPont connector on and then I crimped another DuPont connector onto the wire that comes from the meter. So now this is held in place with a ring terminal so it's, it's good and on there. It's not like a piece of wire that might fray or break off because it's actually got a really good crimp connection to a ring terminal that's on this screw or this bolt and then the ground same thing here this one goes up to this fuse block to measure the 5 volts and so it's the same crimped on a ring terminal and then a DuPont connector and then a DuPont connector that goes to the meter and then both of them have their grounds into this double two position DuPont connector that I crimped that then goes to two individual wires into one crimp with a ring terminal and onto this ground post here so so there you've got the ground that goes into the voltage converter and the ground that goes to the 24 volt and the ground for the 5 volt meter because it doesn't matter which ground you use. I could have routed the ground for the 5 volt meter way up here but the wire wasn't long enough. So yeah 5 volt positive and ground 24 volt positive and ground going to the meters. Why did I do DuPont connectors? And I just realized I I did a mistake. <laughs> um, I did DuPont connectors because you can get a DuPont connector through this hole. So if I take one of these meters off because the meter fails or I want a different color meter or something, I can push the DuPont connector through the small hole. And I just realized that I screwed up a little bit. Oh no, I didn't. Those are individual. Okay, I thought I made a dual DuPont connector down there, but I didn't. Those are two single DuPont connectors. Okay. Didn't make a dumb mistake. So theoretically, and I didn't actually try to shove them through the hole. It does look a bit close now that I'm looking at it because there will be 
when you go to shove one of these wires through that hole, there's going to be the other wire there. So that still might be pretty tight with that size hole, but the theory is that I can disconnect the DuPont connector and push the DuPont connector through that hole and take the meter out without having to cut wires. But yeah, looking at it, I probably should have enlarged that hole before I hooked that up because that might be an issue. But hopefully I won't have to take those off. I don't think I will unless, again, one of them blows up and then at that point I'll be taking the meter off and I can just cut these, the two wires that go to whichever meter remove the meter, put a different meter on, and then put DuPont connectors on for that meter and enlarge the hole when I do that, so. Which begs the question. Also, I guess, if I had to do that and one of them failed, then I could also cut the wire and, yeah, whatever. I put DuPont connectors on there so I could have the crimp connectors. That's basically what I'm trying to say. So there we go. Um, not as much progress as I planned this week. Uh, I've been doing some other things and there's been a bit of a other stuff going on so I didn't get too much done but this part is ready to go and I am now to the point where I can start attaching boards and passing the wires through, crimping the wires through. I've already got a couple 12 gauge wires with crimp connectors that are going to go to the saber tooth for the positive and negative voltage coming into the saber tooth motor controller, feeding back in there um, because they're 12 gauge wire and that's pretty sharp bend. I cut a little bit of a more of a bump out so when these wires pass through there they're not at such a sharp angle. Um, the other wires that go to the foot mortars are going to be 14 gauge so they should be fine with the rest of that opening the size that it is. And the wires that you can see passing behind those holes won't get in the way. I'll be able to work around them and pass the wires that are coming up through here fine without bumping into anything they shouldn't bump into, touching anything they shouldn't touch. So yeah, very small update, but an actual live first test of the battery, I guess you'd call that the battery harness wiring that I did, and the basic functionality of the 5 volt, 24 volt fused blocks and uh, layout.